Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about a book that is a great read, especially if you are a math major. So if your major is mathematics or if you're thinking about majoring in math, uh, this book is totally worth buying. The book is called A Mathematician Survival Guide, Graduate School and Early Career Development, and it's written by Stephen G. Krantz. Uh, and the book just talks about everything, right? It talks about how to apply to graduate school, what to expect in graduate school, how to give, how to get a job after graduate school, uh, expectations, uh, what things are like. It's published by the AMS, which is the American uh, Mathematical Society. I have read this entire book, uh, and I have read several sections uh, more than once. Um, it's not the perfect book. I don't agree with everything that's in the book, but it's a really good book, uh, and you'll probably learn a lot from it. Let's take a look inside it. So this is the table of contents. It talks about getting ready for graduate school, heading off to grad school, uh, impressions of life after college, what to look for in the future, and then preliminaries, you know, how to prepare for graduate school. Uh, talks about undergraduate research, the GRE scores, uh, you know, what about your English? You know, is your, if your English is not as good, uh, what can you expect uh, in graduate school? I know where I went to graduate school, uh, you had to pass a test, and if your English wasn't perfect, um, you couldn't uh, teach. They had pretty strict requirements. Uh, I had a friend who had a really strong accent, and he was not allowed to teach. Uh, but after about a year, uh, he was allowed to teach. Uh, he had to pass uh, an exam, and he was allowed to teach. So that does matter a little bit. How to pay for graduate school? Basically, it's free, right? I mean, if you uh, apply to grad school, um, it should be free. Uh, they should pay you to go to graduate school. You should never be paying for a mathematics uh, PhD program. It talks about qual quals. Look at all these questions that are answered. So Krantz gives his viewpoint on all of these things. Right? I'll just go slowly instead of reading them all. Um, and again, um, I agree with what a lot uh, with a lot of what's in this book. Um, it's a really, really good book. But again, having said that, after um, you know going through grad school and getting a job, I look back and I realize, okay, this is a book, and you know these are his opinions. I don't necessarily agree with everything in the book. But it's a really good book, and if you don't know anything about graduate school, or if you know very little about it, about the process, about the expectations, how to get in, uh, what to do when you finish, it's worth getting this book. This book is absolutely eye-opening. Um, I once Googled something uh, about graduate school, and I ended up reading this Reddit post. And all of the information in the post was just so bad and people were agreeing with these people who were giving uh, bad advice. And I'm thinking, like, oh, my God. Like, how are these people giving this terrible advice and people are actually listening to them? So this book is really solid. This book will not give you terrible advice. Uh, it's a good book. So this is just a random section that I picked to discuss the foreign language requirements. So uh, today, the languages that are most important for mathematics, besides English, are French, German, and Russian. So... At most PhD programs, you have to learn uh, one of these languages. Um, usually you have to pass some type of exam to show that you're somewhat proficient in French, German, and Russian. Uh, for example, I believe that at the University of Notre Dame, or maybe it's Princeton, you have a year, I think, to do this. Uh, I'm not positive, uh, but I know there are some schools, I think it's one of those two, where you have to do it in your first year, so uh, kind of uh, scary. Uh, there are some schools that allow Chinese as, as the language. Not all schools have this requirement. Usually the top schools have uh, this language requirement. So if you didn't know that, then, you know, you learned something new already, and you don't even have uh, the book yet. In this section, he talks about a summary of the optimal qualifications for graduate school. It says, the very best preparation for graduate school in mathematics is this. One, go to a top undergraduate school with well-known faculty. Now, this is one that you may not have control over, right? For example, I went to an okay institution. I did not go to a top undergraduate school, so that one I did not have. Perform well in your undergraduate math courses. You can do that, uh, and you can still do that, uh, even if you haven't. You can always start performing well. Take as many graduate courses as you can while you are still an undergraduate. I also did not do that. Um, I, I just didn't have the time. 
and make a strong impression on your professors so that you can get excellent letters of recommendation, right? So those are uh, important things. It goes on to say, a graduate admissions committee is most comfortable admitting a student from, yeah, the University of Chicago, MIT, or Harvard with forceful letters from eminent faculty whom they know. Absolutely, right? The best possible scenario is a student who has letters from famous faculty that say, I would compare the young student to David Hilbert when Hilbert was at the same stage. So you get something like that uh, from, you know, some faculty member at MIT, and, you know, that, that's a strong letter, right? So interesting uh, perspective. Here Kranz talks about how am I expected to perform in my graduate classes, and he gives an example, and if you scroll down here, it says, what you hand in should be bona fide mathematics. In particular, it should be correct. You should put forth whatever effort and invest whatever time is necessary to be able to achieve the level of excellence that I am describing here. Right. This is graduate school for mathematics, right? You are expected to give it your all. And again, you are usually being paid to be here. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but you know, usually you only teach one class or you do some grading and they pay for all your tuition, you know, which is not cheap. So you are expected uh, to, to work on mathematics uh, full-time, right? It is more uh, than a full-time job. In fact, when I first started working after graduate school, I felt like I was on vacation. Uh, teaching felt like I was on vacation. That's how hard uh, graduate school actually is. Here it talks about how you will be trained for your teaching assistantship duties. Uh, where I went to school, uh, before I taught a class, uh, I had heard that we had to take a teaching class. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh no, I don't want to take some, you know, some stupid class on teaching. But what I had heard was true, and I ended up uh, taking this class on teaching. And it was a class on teaching college math. And let me tell you, uh, it was extremely useful, and I am so glad I took that class. And I still remember things to this day uh, that I learned in that class, right? All kinds of little odd uh, tips and tricks. So usually uh, most schools, especially the better ones, have some type of training uh, for your TA duties. Here it talks about how much money you can expect uh, to make as a professor. So notice the amounts are not quite large. Now this is an older book, but... Um, these amounts are still pretty much in line. Uh, obviously, it varies by you know geographic region, but it's not too far off. I know some places where people make less than this. I know some places where people make more, and I know some places where people make exactly uh, in this range. So you have assistant professors, fifty to fifty-five thousand, and then associate professors, uh, sixty to sixty-five, and then professors, you know, 75, 70 to 75 or more. It just, it just depends, right? It just depends uh, where you're working. This is an interesting comment here. It says, do all assistant professors become associate professors? So typically assistant uh, is non-tenured, and then associate is tenured, and the professor is a step up from that. Um, so if you don't become an associate, that means you didn't get tenure. That's not good at all. So not everyone gets tenure, so uh, the answer is no to that question. Here it says, do all associate professors become full professors? Again, the answer is no. I had a teacher uh, who passed away many years ago, and he was an excellent teacher. I mean, just amazing. And he never became a full professor. You know, he, he lived a very long time. He wrote a couple books and he died an associate professor, um, but he was a great teacher. I think a lot of this uh, depends on your research. So interesting, interesting reads here. The book actually does include some mathematics, right? He talks about some of the math that you need uh, for graduate school. He goes over it very briefly, but still, it's better than nothing, right? And so it's pretty cool that Krantz does that, I think, uh, that he includes uh, some actual math in the book. Overall, I think this is absolutely the best book for math majors. Um, if you haven't read this book yet, I think you should pick it up if you're a math major. Um, it really, really will give you a perspective on what to expect, and it gives you really good advice. Um, so yeah, that's it.